So, hey everyone, uh, welcome to second year of talking about Snaps on Fedora. This time it's Snaps Love Fedora. So it's an ecosystem progress update by myself, Neil, and this is uh, Masiek, who is you know from Canonical. I'll let him talk about himself. Come on. All right. So hi, I'm Masiek. I'm from Canonical. Uh, yeah, basically the the upstream of, of SnapD, basically inside the SnapD core team. So like a couple of guys working exclusively on SnapD. It's a thing that you know, runs, installs, uh, manages Snaps and stuff. Uh, so I, actually, I, I I have a fast account which I created years ago. <laughs> we got into like packaging and everything. <laughs> so that's kind of a crazy situation. Uh, well, it, you know, before joining Canonical, I worked in Embedded for like lots of years and contributing to upstream since we have to open Embedded, uh, Zephyr OS, like doing the first port of, uh, to, of Zephyr to SDM32 chips. Uh, and then I joined Canonical, started working on that piece. Wow, so, okay. and that by the way, I use Arch. So it's like, like I'm, I'm one of those guys who actually you know not only uh, use snaps in Ubuntu because that's like most majority of canonical employees do, but I also use multi of distribution and you know <coughs> my home actually my work laptop is not still running out. Sorry, I'll let you go to people sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> do you run Arch on your Commodore 64? Uh well, oh no no <laughs> but, but by the way the 64 stands for 64 bits right? <laughs> <laughs> sure. All right. So, uh, and of course, y'all kind of know me, but like for just to reiterate, I'm, you know, been around doing this for a little over a decade as a contributor and a packager um, in Fedora. Uh, I've been involved in other distributions like Magia and, Op and OpenSUSE for the past four or so years. Uh, I am involved largely in the, in the software management stack, uh, RPM, DNF, OBS, Koji, um, my day job. I'm a DevOps engineer at Datto. Uh, it's a backup disaster recovery company. There's my Twitter and my email. Uh, but yeah, not quite as interesting as exciting as uh, Masiak here. Um, so, what are snaps? Yeah, so, so what are snaps? Actually, because I, there, there seems to be like a lot of myths about what, what snaps are. Basically, it's just a squash of this image which contains your application, your, your application and all the dependencies. And supposedly it's a way to, to deliver applications uh, into an environment which doesn't really carry all the dependencies inside your native host distribution. Uh, and it's also it's a way to provide uh, like kind of like you know, modules and, and, and streams. Like we can provide the number of channels which carry either like the latest, greatest version of application or the stable version application or the beta version application. You can distinguish between the, the stability levels. Uh, it's, well, it's also not just the application. We can deliver services. So it's like you can dump a snap, which contains services, which are then integrated in with, with systemd. Uh, there's a snap store page, which uh, like a bunch of applications. There's a bunch of snaps already available. Uh, quick list of some of the featured snaps. As you can basically also see that uh, we were also kind of dog fooding, because mm -hmm. uh, LXD is part of, uh, it's actually delivered as a snap, as a snap mo mostly. Uh, it's also a bunch of canonical projects as well. <laughs> yeah, but uh, we are trying to, to be close with the upstream and trying to you know uh, accommodate all the needs because people have different needs, people, people have different problems, and you know trying to just find a way in, in this maze. Uh, so snaps can also deliver. Uh, so there's second mode of snaps, which is kind of not not uh, confined applications, and this is most used for development stacks or some very special. Uh, applications that have to you have, have to work in this kind of a classic distro mode, uh, which in which they're not really confined. They have access to the host system. Uh, yeah, and those is mostly used for delivering, as I said, development stacks like Go, you know, or Node, Rust, and stuff. And well, you yeah. want to go weekend the last yeah. year. So last flock, I came and talked about like how we were starting to roll this out, and we had just gotten the integrations in place. Uh, and things like that, and there were some plans to like evolve the SE link support and things like that, and along those lines. And now we have SnapD and SnapD Glib in Apple 7. That actually happened at the end of last year, which was uh, when I got to the point where I was comfortable enough with my own SE Linux policy for SnapD being good enough to 
make me not scared of it, of it running on, on, on EL7. Um, for, for the Fedora 30 development cycle, I started uh, uh, sketching out the work for the um, for eventual Fedora base snap, and we got the snappy variant added to Fedora release for Fedora 30. This was more in line to be part of the um, the better counting thing that uh, that Matt was trying to pull out somehow. Um, yeah, um, the idea is that it, when people are building software with Fedora stacks, we will have an idea because that will ping us with Snapcraft and uh, and DNF and things like that. Um, the SE Linux backend actually now exists. It doesn't do a lot yet. It is really new, um, but it is it is written and it's in Snap confined and it's in development, that got, that landed in March. So for SnapD, what was it, 236, I think, was when, when that landed? 238 might be when I turned it on. Um, it, we now have the SnapD SE Linux policy and uh, Snap Confine are now generating uh, context for all of the snaps that are being executed on the system. That's, there's not too much happening yet because uh, there's still a lot of work to go about um, plugging in dynamic policy loading into into the kernel, which it doesn't really support doing right now. Um, but that's the thing. We've also added more tests to the upstream CI to cover SE Linux-based behaviors, as well as adding CentOS to the test suite, um, in addition to supporting the latest Fedora. We actually test the latest stable and rawhide. And so that is continuously tested um, for every commit that goes into SnapD upstream. Um, we did make the Fedora 29 base snap demo for last flock. Um, uh, Zygmunt, who was here last year, did that. Uh, that tooling, I have kind of been working on revamping the, and we've been working upstream to try to figure out a definition for what a base snap is supposed to look like, and then we can kind of bring that together with what we consider the minimal environment that. Uh, that should be included for application delivery runtimes, like what is similar to flatback runtimes for the Snap world. Um, and yes, they are still fun, and we have we do have cookies. Um, hopefully, you're not allergic to chocolate. <laughs> um, so, what's kind of going on right now? Um, the ongoing maintenance of SnapD releases again is still a thing. SnapD releases on a monthly cadence, more or less. Um, and a big part of this is, you know, we're still doing refinements and improvements to the policy and building up the back end as things keep changing. We're actually now closely tracking changes in Fedora C Linux. So as the SE Linux policy evolves, <coughs> um, we are adapting to it as well. And because of our test suite, we're actually validating um, as SE Linux policy changes land in Rawhide and whether they still stay compatible with EL7, which is, as it turns out, slightly complicated because um, the SE Linux policy tends to grow new forms of confinement um, that don't exist in EL7, and handling both of those is an interesting challenge. Um, can you give me a basic question? Is the basic confinement with SNAP um, C groups and namespaces or SE Linux? So the basic confinement currently is SecComp, C groups, namespaces, um, and other types of uh, Mac and DAC filtering that are applied at mount time. Uh, so it is it is still reduced compared to how it is on Ubuntu because the App Armor one does the Dbus mediation, and so that's since for example in Flatpak you have the portal mechanism, but portal mecha the portal mechanism essentially is an unfiltered Dbus call, and in Snaps there's actually a way to granularly filter and what they call mediate um, Dbus and other types of IPC type actions. Uh, which is a glorious hack in app armor that's not upstream, but uh, that is something that uh, SnapD relies on. SE Linux actually has equivalent functionality, but it is really tricky to support because SE Linux does not support, as far as I'm aware, somebody who knows better can tell me otherwise, uh, directly dynamically loading um, policy instructions through libSE Linux at runtime. That's the part that is, that kind of is making this difficult to enhance the backend because for app armor, what they do is, um, snap confine generates the policy as the mounts are being generated, as the application is being loaded, and then just shunts it into the kernel and then unloads it by poking the kernel until the pro profiles go away. 
And so it's kind of scary and glorious at the same time. <laughs> so it's that that part is where like we're trying to abstract those differences and try to provide like a framework for us to fill in SE Luke's backend stuff as we keep going along. That's largely what Masik has been doing for the past few months. Um, and I've been kind of helping him a little bit here and there with trying to fill in some of the roles and features and things like that and making sure that that stuff is working. Um, and then improving the integration in the desktop UI experiences. GNOME Software and Plasma Discover have gotten a fair bit of work um, in the Air Upstream projects. The KD guys have actually done a lot of it by themselves because KD Neon has been exploring this for a while. Um, for GNOME, uh, Canonical has been doing it upstream uh, principally to benefit us and other distributions that prefer the GNOME software experience, um, as well as because in the current Ubuntu LTSs, they are shipping it as well. Um, I realize that there's been a little bit of a kerfuffle related to this um, in the GNOME community, but uh, as far as basically everyone I talk to, um, Canonical is at this point saying that the, the GNOME software experience is something that they want to preserve and enhance out as they can, um, provided upstream is okay with it. So we'll see how that goes. Um, so here's kind of where we are now. Snapbee has been in the Fedora repository since Fedora 26. Um, I am actually fairly aggressive about updating things as they go. Um, as long as things still compile, they get updated, they get tested and updated. Uh, one of the things I'd like to do in the near future is if it, when Fedora CI becomes like not broken for me, uh, I'd like to actually add some smoke tests and basic tests for the entire Snapbee stack to execute for package builds and updates. Um, don't know how that's going to happen anytime soon because of some of the other bits related to that. Mm. Um, SnapD and GNOME software integration. Uh, the Snap Store is an extra source. It works the same way you do when you're working with flat packs. Um, some Snap specific features, channels, and interfaces, and things like that. It has been available also since Fedora 26, but except with Fedora 31, things are in a wobbly state of affairs right now, um, depending on how things kind of shake out over the next week or so. It will show up. It will be, it'll return, uh, whether it's part of the GNOME software source package or I wind up being forced to do the terrible deed of building GNOME software all over again and shipping only parts of it. Uh, it will still be there. Uh, so at, at this point, I can say it will be there. I don't know how right now. Um, you can ask for now if you want, but I'd also like to finish. Right. Let's, <laughs> um, Plasma Discover integration has actually drastically improved since it was introduced in Fedora 28. It actually works kind of well. Um, it's similar to GNOME software, and I think the maturity level is about the same at this point. Uh, there's just a little bit of weirdness because it is younger. Um, and people aren't paying as much attention to KDE as they are GNOME, which is sad, because that's what I use. <laughs> um, but Snapcraft is still the problem. Uh, and we still don't have it. As it turns out, it is really hard to add new backends to Snapcraft. It is a massively complicated piece of software that does really crazy things to make it possible for you to not have to rebuild everything in order to make working snaps out of stuff that, is, that wasn't snapped in the first place. Um, it's something that we will kind of get to, but uh, I don't have the bandwidth right now to do it. And uh, Masiak did some work uh, actually in the past couple of weeks to try to get at least it working sort of um, in, in the copper for Rawhide. Uh, do you want to talk a little yeah, bit about so, that? So, so, so this basically started as me trying to run Snapcraft at large um, natively without you know, installing Snapcraft as a snap, uh, which you know, turned into a larger crusade to get it working for Dora because why not, right? Uh, yeah, it's kind of hackish. Uh, the checks I was able to manage to make all the unit tests working, so uh, there's that, but it you know, allows you to log in, to push the snaps, and basically just do some basic operations. Uh, it's still, if you build, it's not really running the build natively. It's still trying to launch multipass or on XD under the hood. So that's that's still a problem, uh, a problem right? <laughs> uh, but yeah, we can try it and see how far you can get with that. You want to go? Oh, sure. Why not? 
Uh, I really don't know too much about this beyond like the, I decided to kind of give up trying to make the Snapcraft thing work now and I wanted to try to find a different path to getting Fedora applications shipped as snaps for the benefit of the snap using community, which is increasing um, quite a bit. Uh, so the modularity tooling, you know, for all of its warts, uh, is actually pretty good at producing non-RPM artifacts that are usable by humans, uh, because they're doing this right now for flat packs, and it works kind of okay, modulo bugs with the runtime. Um, and extending this to produce snaps and allowing Fedora to publish them that way, I don't think it'd be that difficult to add, and it would actually allow for a familiar-ish you know, pipeline to releasing maybe simultaneously from the same base runtime kind of environment um, software and in both formats for people to leverage. Because in the Ubuntu world, you'll get snaps by default on your system, and seeing Fedora produce content uh, or Fedora deliver content uh, for them to benefit from, I think, would be hugely valuable and raise the profile of what we're doing um, as a community. Um, and, it, and our tooling is already optimizing itself around producing modules, and so it will make it a lot easier to scale out uh, building out snaps in the same way that we're trying to scale out building flat packs. So this is, again, like I said this last year as well, but a little bit tweaked with new information. Um, building, we want Fedora to be the best source for developers to build software for. And that means that allows them to, even if they're you know, trapped in this Ubuntu world, they can actually use the best source of software, which I think is Fedora, and uh, be able to create applications with that and support them um, effectively. Um, and that starts with the base snap. And actually, Masiak had just told me a few days ago that we have now finally kind of got a definition of what is the expectation of what a base snap is supposed to include. So I'm going to try to see if we can harmonize that with what we expect in a Fedora-based runtime and produce something that we can have either at the, near the end of the Fedora 31 development cycle or at the beginning of the Fedora 32 one to have that rolled out um, and in place. Um, the handoff to the infrastructure team for publishing and releasing does not mean that I'm going to go away as the maintainer of that particular piece of software that does that bit. I'm, I'm actually in the process of writing the tool uh, and I intend to maintain it um, as part of working with um, RHEL Engine and other infrastructure people. So it's not like I'm going to throw it over the wall and then it's all your fault if it breaks. I'll still be around to help, of course. Um, and of course, this is all about producing snaps as an artifact for modules. And then another bit is we want to also still get the Snapcraft bit there because it does provide certain things for people that are unique to the developer experience. And one of the things that I have, you know, when I've been playing with the Snap tooling, Snapcraft, I think, is a major plus point, despite how scary it is under the hood. Uh, it is supremely easy to put together a piece of software as a well-crafted Snap and ship that for people with the Snapcraft tooling. I'm not saying we can't do that also with the Fedora tooling, but it is the native tooling, and I'd like to also see that work well for, uh, for producing stock software based on Fedora. And then, of course, C groups v2, which is now a thing that uh, we're going to we're going to deal with. Actually, I should thank the the container team for this because we have known about this for about two years, and the change proposal actually made it was the final hurdle to push it to get work done on it. So, uh, when everyone was complaining during the to, during the discussion on Devil about how SnapD would be broken by this, um, I had talked to. Uh, the core team for Snap, the SnapD core team, and got it. We basically got it prioritized so that this is going to be fixed. The expectation right now, when I was talking to um, to one of the members of the team, was that we should actually have it working by the end of the Fedora 31 life cycle, development cycle. Um, probably before beta freeze, we will have basic support in place, and then by the end of the, uh, after RC freeze we will probably have complete support, as long as things don't go horribly wrong. At least not broke. Yeah. Support, so. Yeah, and so right now the, the testing apparatus in, up, in upstream is being adjusted so that we produce a second rawhide and Fedora 30 variant that has C groups v2 switched on. And so that will be used to add to the testing of it as soon as the initial patches that add support for this land. Um, 
to maybe have a quick jump in because I'm, I'm kind of because you know that part. Yeah, because I kind of started to again this on, 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 on this uh, bit as well. So we, we, we started with rawhide, then we moved to to Fodar 30 because of different mount problems with 5.3 kernels in rawhide. <laughs> so it's kind of like you know, well, juggling. The, 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 the loop stuff got broken again in the kernel. Yeah, so it's. You know, because we're kind of like trying to exploit the kernel, at least the, 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 the mount APIs a bit. Uh, we, try, we, we tend to hit different behavior scenarios where you know, it's not really uh, possible to uh, fix that in an easy way. So we have to act, kind of accommodate and find a stable, distressed, stable kernel. So, but also the switching to to high to, 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 to unify C groups, help identify some problems with LXD snaps. So that's all tracked in our, uh, you know, actually topic trackers, which is uh, this course. Uh, yeah, it's being actively worked on. Uh, this is still uh, yeah, yeah, also <laughs> this experimentation with packet, because kind of like, like, like the idea that we could bring, because snap this pack actually, which, is, which lives in, uh, which, which is upstream, is really close to the one that's, that's used by Neil uh, for, for packaging. There are Slightly slight differences, like we're one on, outstanding patch, I guess. We have one outstanding patch, and there's a couple of conditionals you have upstream that I don't want to have. Right. And we're gonna try to see if we can get rid of those. So, is we'll, this packet to sort to, to snap, or is this packet for the snap software? So the packet for the snap software to the audience. So, well, I started it with packet, got some initial success, uh, got a kind of building, and we'll, we'll see where we can. We move, move that further, maybe provide like from Git releases, at least in some copper repo, just you know for yeah. early testing. I used to provide in the in the early days of the integration. I used to provide a SnapD Git uh, copper where I would just take snapshots and push them, but it's a pain in the butt to do that by hand, and so this might actually make it so we can bring that back. Right. Uh, yeah, so uh, as, as well about Fedora-based snaps, so as, as, as Neil mentioned uh, last, last week, basically, uh, kind of the, we have some decisions about what, what base snaps should, 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 should actually do. This, this was also triggered by a request from from community cr to create a base snap based on, f based on free desktop runtime, uh, which kind of, you know, start or, you know, pose some questions about whether base snaps should provide some parameter profiles, and how about confinement? What are the, 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 what are the limits on what should be inside the base snap? So we 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 have a list of integration points, which is basically just mount locations, and we'll see how far we can get with that. Because right, yeah, because <laughs> we don't know yet. I mean, the, although our Fedora base snap will not be the first base snap right. that uses Fedora bits. So did you, did you get any info from Zygmunt about that? Uh, no, no. no. Yeah. Well, <laughs> then, the only thing I can say is that the go to uh, snaps that are, in, uh, that are in the snap store are actually all using Fedora libraries and tools because that's, what, that's the, the stuff that they wanted to use. Which go to go the, 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 game, the game engine. Yeah, cool. So, Although, yeah. as far as as, as 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 far as I know, they they use some really wacky build process to well, I mean, Sigmund wrote it by hand, so we already <laughs> know it's weird. We already know it's weird, um, but it, it also shows that the Fedora stuff isn't incompatible with being in that kind of a confinement environment. So we already know that this is possible and workable. It's just that producing a standardized environment for everyone to consume is something that we need to sketch out and, and actually define. Uh, yeah, so we're actually running out of time, so maybe I'll just skip the demo. Uh, it, you know, it was just basically... <laughs> well, you can ask your question. He's the one to answer. All right, I'll ask my question. So, uh, is there going to be an open source... Can we push these to a Fedora-run Snap Store or to a distro-neutral Snap Store that is not owned by Canonical and proprietary software and looking to monetize? So, I'm probably the worst person to... <laughs> Yeah, ask this question. Person, so yeah, I'm the canonical person. So, so my response, at least, you know, my my response would, would be, uh, I will get back to you. Yeah, because, <laughs> because honestly, it is a lot. But it, it, the, the slide with the halo is interesting to me for the same reason that Fedora and WSL is interesting to me. If we could get that to work. More, more Fedora everywhere is good, but this is basically we're putting Fedora into Ubuntu space. Um, for the good of users who are stuck on a Ubuntu um, kind of situation, right? Um, and if we wanted to do something more than that, um, 
we need the we need the neutral or Fedora owned place to put it. And uh, we're looking at putting flat packs into Quay as a you know, mm -hmm. it, Brent had owned, but it's a neutral, neutral <laughs> distro neutral right. uh, source. Um, so we have, you know, then, then that can basically use a generic registry that doesn't require anything. Sure. So one of the things that I have previously talked to Hanamaki people about, and I think you're kind of aware of it because you were there for a few of them, uh, is that at least for development staging and all those kinds of things, it'd be nice to have a way to put it all there somewhere and then yes, publishing for other for lots of other people to consume, like how we do with the Docker Hubs thing. Same thing for this, but and it would be nice to... Docker providing registry, which is basically a, a, a way to upload something, make it available, but doesn't really mean that it has the same functionality as the full Docker Hub, right? Right. So, I, I personally, I, I don't really see a reason for this not happening, because it seems like an easy way out to you know, solve this controversy. Uh, and hopefully we can, we can make it work. The, I think the, the real problem at this point is that still the store APIs are unstable and so re-implementing it or splitting it out is still difficult um, and it, it is something that I do push for as, as I keep working with them and it is a concern that that they do keep in the back of their minds about it I it's definitely something I want to see happen before we get to the snappy fedora uh, edition or something like that, where everything can be booted up in Snap, similar in the in a similar fashion to how Ubuntu Core works. Because if if I want to get to that world, I also want to be able to provide that kind of an experience for people. Um, I already know how I would, if I needed to, how to change SnapD to allow us to do that. It's just a matter of having an implementation to use. So it's it's more of a function of time and effort, and getting somebody to say this is what it's supposed to look like more than anything else. Because it, it, it totally can happen. Everything is, all the bits are in place from the snappy side to make that kind of thing happen right now. Um, it's just that we don't, the store is still churning API wise, and that makes it very difficult for me to be able to pin down or anyone else to pin down an open source implementation. There was one, and the reason we- There's a model for development of something like this? Yeah, I know, it's, it, it's like some kind of thing with a namespace and a number and- Well, that or, <laughs> Developing it in the open and then productizing as downstream, just like a recommendation for one, one way to do these things. I mean, you know, glass glass stones. <laughs> yeah, but in seriousness, uh, that that's really a showstopper. For, yeah. For um, full support. I mean, what you're doing is cool, um, and I'm not going to block it or anything. But it's hard to get. It, Certainly, nobody at Red Hat in an official wearing a Red Hat capacity is going to be interested in this at all in that state. Mm -hmm. And as a community project, you know, with Fedora's interests in mind, it is only mildly interesting to me in, uh, when it is basically a feed stuff into the canonical universe and put canonical at the center of gatekeeping for applications. Um, that's that's not a future that I want, and it's not a future that's great for Fedora. So, I mean, I personally would like to see something more neutral happening to even the existing Snap Store implementation, I, but I can't do anything about it. Running out of time. I know we're out of time. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's, uh, I saved the time for the last. Uh, yeah. So speaking of flat packs, so. All right. Let's wrap it up. Yep. Thank you guys. Thanks.